Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining. I'm sorry we're starting a little bit late. We just wanted to give everybody time to jump on. Um, today's webinar is covering SageMaker and the four components of SageMaker. So it, it looks like there's a great deal of interest in this topic, and I'm happy to see that. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different things that our partners do with SageMaker. Some of you use SageMaker soup to nuts, the whole thing. Some of you use just the just some parts of it. Um, and so Rumi's going to kind of explain what those parts are and how how our customers use them and how you might use them as well. Um, so Rumi Olson is our esteemed presenter for today. She's um, an AWS uh, partner solution architect and she specializes in machine learning. Um, this is her first time presenting to you on this webinar, so we are excited to have her and hope to welcome her back to present on future webinars for our partners. Um, also on the call today, we have Chris Burns. You guys have heard from Chris many times. He's a senior partner solution architect, also with an AI ML specialty, and he's going to be answering questions today. Um, so if you look on the right nav of your GoToWebinar console, you'll see that there's uh, there's kind of a lot of different options down there, but there's a question option, and a couple of you have already asked questions so far today. Um, that is your place to pop those questions in, and Chris will kind of sort through those, uh, see where we have some common questions, and then try to um, try to chime in during Rumi's presentation and make sure we get those questions answered for you. If we don't get them all answered, we will send an email out afterward with some of the details. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get things started with Rumi. Thank you, Sue. Uh, thank you everyone for joining the uh, Deep Dive webinar today. I'm excited to talk about uh, Amazon SageMaker, uh, particularly four main components and their interoperability. So before we get into SageMaker, so machine learning is enabling us to solve some of the most difficult problems in computer science. So traditionally, software has been uh, developed to, um, by coding instructions in a high-level programming language. So ML uh, machine learning is a complete breakthrough from this uh, paradigm. In machine learning, you present data to a model that is then trained based on that data to achieve the desired solution. Uh, these solutions are often predictive in nature. So by enabling the machines or the data to code, rather than programmers, uh, some out outstanding breakthroughs have been achieved. So um, natural language processing has achieved uh, dramatically uh, from the personal experiences of Alexa, as you, you may know. Uh, that not only uh, transcribes the uh, solution, uh, I mean the sounds it hears, but uh, determines the exact uh, intent of each communication. So it can then uh, respond uh, with spoken language to sat satisfy the intent of the request. So we have solved the uh, big problems in computer vision, uh, so much so that uh, the entire body of code, uh, more than two decades worth of development in uh, like OpenCV was almost completely discarded with the advent of machine learning. So um, not only vision, but interpretation of sounds, touch, even taste, and smell are dramatically ac uh, accelerated with machine learning. Uh, problem solving from anomalies in field equipment to flow detections are uh, experiencing revolutionary adva uh, advancements. Reasoning um, itself is defined by models that are, are unhindered by human bias and accepting ground truth data as the uh, basis of logic and outcomes. So um, our mission is to put machine learning in the hands of every developer, data scientist, and architect. So we don't believe that machine learning is exclusively for people who've studied data science and have masters or PhD in computer science. So we are targeting the people who can read and understand code. Uh, when we develop and iterate our services, we keep this in mind. As you might have seen this before, but um, uh, to summarize, uh, the AWS AI and the machine learning stack has three key layers. So each key, uh, each layer addressing different audiences. So the, from the top, uh, AI services, the developers with no prior uh, machine learning experience can easily build a sophisticated AI-driven um, applications, uh, like an AI-driven uh, contact center or like a live media subtitling 
or understanding voice of customers or content moderation. The middle one is a, a machine learning services. Uh, it's for developers and data scientists who build and launched Amazon. Uh, we, build, we build this uh, service um, for uh, those developers and data scientists. Uh, it's a managed machine learning service to build, train, and then deploy machine learning models quickly. So today's topic is uh, it's about this service. The so bottom layer is uh, machine learning frameworks and infrastructure uh, for expert machine learning practitioners who work at the framework level and those who are uh, comfortable building and training and tuning and deploying machine learning models. So let's get into it. Uh, Amazon SageMaker is a fully managed machine learning service. With SageMaker, data scientists and developers can quickly and easily uh, build and train machine learning models, and then directly deploy, uh, deploy them into a production-ready hosted environment. So it's built on four independent architecture components, which are notebook instances, where you do exploratory data analysis. And the ne next one is built-in algorithms to get you kick-started with machine learning. And then the managed service for training models, and the hosting service where you deploy models and then we provide the API for you. So there are no dependencies uh, between the, these components. If you only want to host models you've created on premises, you can do that. If you only want to train and deploy elsewhere, uh, and you, uh, you can do that. Um, you never need to open a notebook to use SageMaker. However, that is the uh, principal means of data exploration and every features, um, training, hosting uh, services can be called from the notebook. So creating powerful exploration um, notebook is uh, very easy. You choose your mach machine size, hit return and it's there. And I will show you later. Uh, in one click, you can do nearly everything in machine learning. It's connected to a, a containerized environment and at your uh, preference, you can access to CPU or GPU. And we have more than uh, 30 sample uh, notebooks uh, included in every instance that provide ease of use uh, and to, to kickstart your uh, workflow. The sample notebooks provide business focused solutions uh, from uh, churn prediction to demand forecasting topic and object classification, and log processing and anomaly, anomaly detections. Uh, so these are free, uh, and then they are free tier available for exploration. And you can just launch it, go through the examples, and discover which samples apply to your needs. So our built-in algorithms have been restructured to take, uh, make them capable of training on streaming data. Uh, training faster in a single pass and provide a greater uh, reliability on large data sets. So examples of built-in algorithms are factorization machines, uh, regression, principal component analysis, k-means clustering, xgboost, and uh, much more. So traditional uh, machine learning training required a, a tough trade-off, time for money. So if you uh, use uh, either a distributed model with intensive hardware for a short period of time or, or pay less, but uh, wait longer. So the benefit of st uh, streaming is a, a flat memory requirement uh, regardless of the size of the data set. Uh, the time and the cost increase um, linearly with the size of the data set um, and not limited by memory capacity. And streaming data to train a model means aggregating your training data from several sources, uh, such as S3, RDS, or an object store in, uh, into a single pipe. The data runs through your model and creates an uh, internal state. For, uh, for example, the values of the hidden layers of a neural net. So this state is uh, preserved in, outside of the memory and a GPU. In a distributed model, you pull from aggregated sources and ideally split the data set equally to a cluster. Uh, 
then each machine will uh, develop its own independent state, uh, which must be shared um, in order to build a single uh, single model. Uh, the system and network administration to stand, uh, stand up uh, this architecture has been accelerated by our shared state mechanism. We do the heavy lifting for you. The built-in algorithms in SageMaker enable uh, streaming to clusters that use the shared state mechanism, enabling fast, high throughput, high capacity uh, data set training with a single click. So we measured the time uh, versus cost outcomes on the SageMaker streaming uh, clusters to traditional solutions. And across the board, we have cost and time savings. So let's take a look at some of the algorithms that come, uh, come with SageMaker. So we trained a linear learner against 30 gigabytes of data set for uh, web spam and web URL classification. On a mean square error, uh, the built-in algorithms are comparable at a 1.02 error rate and compared to 1.06 for traditional trainers. However, we blow the other algorithm off the map in terms of time and cost. In short, uh, you get the same accuracy at the fraction of the cost. So factorization machine uh, is a generalization of a linear regression. It does a linear, uh, linear regression of a multi-dimensional multi space. And factorization machines are widely used for recommendation systems. In a uh, single stream session, we achieve the same accuracy in uh, 820 seconds on one terabyte of data uh, that um, other methods achieve after 50 iterations over uh, 3,000 seconds. So k-means and class, uh, k-means clustering is uh, pre frequently used as a first uh, phase analysis on unlabeled data. It is also used for anomaly detection by minimizing the mean distance between the nearest neighbors. Uh, here we score 10 times faster than comparable algorithms. The deeper you go from the text to images, uh, to video, etc., cetera, um, the greater the performance improvement. So XGBoost is a training algorithm that is winning most Kaggle com uh, competitions. It is a boosted uh, decision tree that uh, penalizes the depth of a tree. We've optimized it for the, for the cloud. So let's get into the training service. Um, you introduce algorithms into SageMaker in uh, three basic ways. So have you seen the uh, previous slides, uh, you can use one of our highly optimized built-in algorithms. Uh, these algorithms are tuned for scale, speed, and accuracy. We currently have 17, and we are continuously adding more. And our second way is you can build your own script uh, built on the popular machine learning frameworks. Ones that we currently support are MXNet, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, PyTorch and China. Those are um, very, very popular uh, frameworks that's been uh, widely used out there. Uh, what you will do is to provide an entry point Python script, uh, which defines how to train your model when you are cre uh, creating an estimator with a framework, framework of your choice. Uh, you are also uh, setting training instance type, the number of instance if distributed training, and hyperparameters for the algorithms. And then you will use this estimator object to call your fit function uh, to start that training. All are done using SageMaker Python SDK. So there's a great documentation online um, to show you how to use SageMaker Python SDK, uh, providing the sample code to get you started for each of the frameworks. The link um, is provided under the diagram on the screen. And you can also uh, use uh, uh, connection between Spark and uh, uh, the SageMaker, where Spark preprocesses uh, your data and hands it off to SageMaker for training. And then um, you can uh, bring your own model trained elsewhere, perhaps on premises, and you build the model locally and build your own container 
and ship the container to uh, SageMaker for deployment. And the fourth one, actually, that's not shown on the slide is to use algorithms available on uh, AWS uh, SageMaker machine learning marketplace. You can easily load algorithms uh, you subscribe to uh, to your SageMaker environment to train, uh, train with your data set. So at the reInvent last year, we launched uh, AWS's uh, TensorFlow optimizations to provide uh, near linear scaling efficiency across hundreds of uh, GPUs uh, to operate at cloud scale without a, without a lot of processing overhead to train more accurate, more sophisticated models in much less time. So for example, at uh, 256 GPUs, TensorFlow is only able to use 65% of the total capacity, which is incredibly wasteful and expensive. And uh, so you, we came up with a solution uh, to overcome this limitation, significantly improving TensorFlow's scaling efficiency up to 90% across 256 GPUs. Uh, it, it achieves close linear scalability across hundreds of GPUs. We did this by uh, improving the way in which uh, TensorFlow shares uh, model parameters across multiple instances. So making the sharing faster and more efficient between instances. So looking at the common computer vision model for uh, image classification, a deep neural network called ResNet50 trained on hundreds of thousands of images. The fastest time to train this model was 30 minutes. With the improvements we made in TensorFlow, we reduced the training time by over 50% to just 14 minutes. Uh, this is the fastest time for training, ResNet using TensorFlow anywhere. So, opt so our optimization can be applied to multiple different models, including convolutional neural networks for images and then recurrent neural networks for language uh, or recommendation. It is available in SageMaker and a deep learning army. So um, here's a full, uh, man full managed training experience. So here's a full, uh, full managed training experience. So you fetch your data from S3, you uh, push the model back to S3, and then uh, you build a container that you store in ECR or uh, Docker Hub. And you can train on uh, GPU or CPU and we've broken out hyperparameter optimization as a separate process. Uh, it is fully managed and secure. And we've talked about the data exploration experience um, where you are using notebooks to fully understand and prepare your data for training. Uh, we covered multiple algorithms for data training uh, from built-in to uh, build your own approaches. So now uh, let's talk about hosting next. So putting a model into production is uh, where the uh, rubber hits the road. The SageMaker makes deploying in the cloud as simple as uh, filling out a form. You start uh, with defining a, a production variant. The production variants are units of hardware that um, you specify to host your protective system. At AWS, hardware is code and as such is a flexible as code. So here's, um, here we uh, specify our instance type as a C3 uh, 4x large uh, with an uh, initial instance count of three. So importantly, the, uh, we specify the initial variant weight as 100%. So your model object is a connector between your model artifacts and your inference container image. When you deploy that model, initially you're sending 100% of the traffic to that endpoint and collecting ground truth. That might be end of it for a while. Um, as your uh, customers use the model, you invariably find that ground truth data from real world experience is different from the historical data used to build the model. So as you uh, retrain your model, you will make update, updated model objects and I need to test them before launching uh, into production. So with endpoint configuration, we can divert a percentage of the traffic to uh, for blue-green blue, uh, blue testing. 
unlike the old days uh, where continuous integration on enterprise systems meant a uh, release cycle of weeks or months, uh, training models from refreshed um, ground truths often takes place, takes place within hours. As you gain confidence in the updated model object, um, you can divert all traffic to the new object and the continuous integration and deployment process continues. So this means the rapid model deployment in uh, near real time on ground truths uh, uh, derived from actual, uh, actual customer experience. So hosting with SageMaker greatly reduces the heavy lifting involved in bringing machine learning to life. We can, uh, you, we can deploy fully from the SageMaker console or with the Python SDK. And uh, when the training is kicked off uh, through calling fit function, SageMaker training job is created automatically and you can uh, view the job on SageMaker console. And when the training completes, the model artifact is saved to your S3 bucket. So the, using the model artifact, uh, you will create a model object in SageMaker. That is the first step. And then second step, when uh, you will uh, create an endpoint configuration and specifying the machine learning compute instances, uh, you want uh, SageMaker to launch to host each production variant. And then finally, you create HTT endpoint. So these are the steps you take if you use the SageMaker console or GUI to deploy your model. If you use a SageMaker Python SDK, uh, you, you call estimator.deploy uh, function, specifying uh, initial instance count in, and an instance type. When, uh, what happens when the deploy uh, function is called is that it starts the EC2 instance of the count and, and the type you specified. And on each instance, uh, start a Docker container optimized for uh, TensorFlow, uh, for example, of the TensorFlow uh, framework is being used. And then uh, start a TensorFlow uh, serving process um, configured to run your model. And then start a Python uh, based HTTP server. So it all happens behind the scene for you. And alternative to those two methods, you can write and configure your own custom container, which allows you to use specific framework frameworks that is not supported by SageMaker. All right, so let's get into demo. So uh, this is a SageMaker console. Um, on the left side of the navigation, you see ground truth, notebook, training, and inference. And the first one that I'm going to uh, kind of walk, walk you through is the notebook uh, instance. So I have multiple notebook, notebook instance already started. Um, how to create a notebook instance is just to click this orange button. Oh, here it is. And then you specify the name and the instance type that is uh, you can choose from currently like four uh, type, types are supported. T type uh, is a uh, small, uh, small size, like a general purpose uh, instance type. And then M is also general purpose. Um, and then uh, C type, which is compute optimized uh, instance. And then lastly, uh, P instance, which is the uh, GPU instances. And as you can see, the medium, large, X large, uh, two X large. So higher it goes, that's, there's a more uh, network capacity and also the memory is allocated for that size. So I'll just uh, use uh, one of the types. Um, for just a uh, notebook instance, it's going to host Jupyter notebook. And then often that um, you don't need a large, like a powerful uh, instance type because when you train, train with your data set, um, there will be a different instance type you can specify. For that for that case, you can use, like a, let's say, P uh, instance. So like for this one, I'm just going to choose M. And then uh, Elastic Inference. Uh, this, this is probably often not needed for just hosting a notebook instance, but uh, this is a uh, Elastic inference is a GPU acceleration, and uh, this is also available in a, a EC2 console when you are uh, uh, creating EC2 instance to say host uh, your uh, endpoint outside of SageMaker, and you could add uh, Elastic inference into your EC2 instance. 
And then uh, this is the uh, permission setting. So um, when you first time creating, you, you, you choose to create new role, but this is to um, basically, uh, you're giving the permission to SageMaker that uh, you're allowing uh, to perform particular uh, tasks. So uh, this is to, so that SageMaker, you're not giving everything in you know, like an admin rights and so, uh, to the SageMaker. So the first time you create um, it, this, uh, create a new role, it adds automatically that SageMaker through access. So you can do anything uh, that is SageMaker, like um, creating, starting, uh, there's a, a multiple things that's added. So you don't have to specify, but then as you get uh, comfortable about uh, permissions and settings, uh, you can customize uh, these permissions. And um, when I, let's say I do something operational as uh, creating Lambda function from uh, uh, the notebook instance, I, I add like a Lambda permission so that you, you could those do customization. And then scroll down. Uh, another thing to mention is the GitHub repository. So you can load uh, the code, uh, sample code from GitHub uh, by specifying the GitHub, GitHub repository here. And then you just simply click create, uh, create notebook instance. And then you will actually cancel because I don't have to create one. And then you will uh, create. The instance, it, it might take a few minutes to provision all of the resources. And then um, I already have ones op, uh, available. So when you create Open Jupyter, it will bring up this screen, the Jupyter environment. And uh, this is where you can uh, do the magic. And the place that I mentioned earlier, um, the SageMaker examples, uh, here's what you can find. So there's a I mean, we made a lot of examples and then uh, great learning tools uh, to uh, actually you can go through it and then see which, which one you want to actually look at and learn. Today, we are going to actually use uh, XGBoost with uh, MNIST. But uh, how you load uh, is you can uh, actually you can use preview to kind of take a look at what's in a notebook. But then when you want to load into your notebook instance, you press use this orange button and it will load the code uh, to your uh, notebook instance. So I have that already here loaded. And then I will show you this notebook. So we're gonna look at the XGBoost uh, notebook. So um, I'm, I'm walking through this because uh, this will show the, um, hopefully shows, shows you better of the interoperability of those four components that I just uh, presented in the slides. So the first one, uh, so um, we'll take a look at the XGBoost uh, uh, with the MNIST. So like, um, so this XGBoost algorithm is a SageMaker's built-in algorithms uh, used for uh, training multi-class classification model. And we will use this uh, public data set called uh, MNIST to train this model. So MNIST data set is a set of uh, handwritten images, handwritten numbers, digits like a zero to nine. And then so uh, it consists of a training set of like 60,000 examples and a test set of uh, 10,000 examples. And it's multi-class classification because um, you know zero is one class, one is another class, two is, two is another class, two the you know zero to nine. So there's uh, uh, ten classes. And then uh, we are training the model to identify that your handwritten uh, you know is what number. So that's kind, that's the model uh, is able to do after the training is done. So they are, uh, let's see, starting with the prerequisite and preprocessing. So the first thing we do is to set up the environment with a, with a few prerequisites uh, for permissions and configurations. The first cell contains the Python code where uh, imports um, necessary libraries uh, such as BOTO3 and then uh, SageMaker's Python SDK. So BOTO3 is a Python library that contains mostly all uh, uh, 
AWS's uh, services uh, API. So you, you can uh, have access to S3, for example, or um, you know, get an object from S3. So Boto3 have all, all of the uh, libraries for it. And um, it has a code, uh, this cell has a code to retrieve IAM role, uh, uh, which comes from IAM ROM that you specified when created the notebook instance, um, as I showed earlier. And then a few uh, variables to define S3 bucket, uh, uh, name and pass right here. Scroll down. So the data ingestion, uh, uh, next of all, we, we, we read the data from the existing repository into memory uh, for processing prior for training. And then this uh, processing could be also done by um, Amazon Athena, Apache, uh, uh, Spark in Amazon EMR and Amazon Redshift and et cetera, which just simply loads into uh, your memory. And then I will do data conversion next. Uh, since the algorithm um, have a particular input uh, requirements, uh, converting the data set is also part of the process that a data scientist goes through prior to training, uh, prior to initiating training. In this particular case, the data is converted from NumPy array uh, to the uh, libsvm format uh, before uh, being uploaded to S3. So XGBoost uh, con consumes the data in um, live S SVM format uh, uh, from, from S3 bucket for training. So the, and then this third cell, let's see, it's just defining uh, all the functions. So you can see defining the functions. And then four cells, the next one, uh, over here, this, this actually uh, calls that kicks off, basically executes all of the code in the previous cell. Uh, this is the entry point of that um, uh, com convert data is entry point function to do all of the conversion. Let's move on to the training. So that now that we have our data in S3, so that previous code uh, loaded all of the uh, data into S3 in a format that XGBoost can basically take. Um, so we will uh, begin the training now, and we'll use Amazon SageMaker's built-in algorithm, uh, the XGBoost, and then we'll actually uh, fit two models, uh, this one, uh, fit two models uh, in order to demonstrate a single machine and then distribute training. Um, the fifth one, don't know if you can see the cursor, but uh, this fifth uh, cell, um, specifies uh, which container image we're using um, because each built-in algorithm is packaged as a container. So you so you are loading the container image uh, for the training. So this is where I just specify. We say this region, uh, I use Oregon region and the X XG boost. And then six cell, six cell, uh, is defining the parameters for SageMaker as well as the hyperparameter for the algorithm. So this is where the hyperparameter is being set. And everything else is, uh, is really for, uh, for SageMaker. So container, you say we, we want an XGBoost container, a bucket path, uh, this is for outputs. So once the trainer is, training is complete, uh, the model artifact is outputted to S3 bucket. So this is specifying where to put, which is it's, uh, your bucket. Let's see another thing that should be noted. Data source is also S3 bucket. And then let's see. And then yeah, here. So, the, uh, so this one, uh, says initial uh, instance count is to be one. This is the uh, instance type that where your training is uh, going to happen. So this one we're using, because MNS is very small data set, so we don't need a P a GPU instance. So this is just general purpose instance we are using. Um, let's see. So that's just defining the variables. So that the seventh uh, cell uh, shows how to set uh, instance count. So that 
previous cell was showed just a, it's for both a, a single instance and multiple instance. And this is where, uh, I guess we don't have to, but then just showing how to change the parameter values after that's been defined. So it's just showing that here, it's, it says, oh, okay, this is single count um, training, single instance training. And then, uh, and it's assigned to this single machine job, job uh, over here, parameter, single machine job parameters. And then uh, here, another one, the distributed job, uh, uh, job parameters, the part that I should point out is here. So it's distributed, so it's, we are using, uh, uh, instead of one, we are using two instances to do the training. Right. So let's move on to the next. So let's see. So um. So a cell. Uh, this this cell has a code that sits at. Uh, okay, hold on. This one. I already did that. Nice here. So the nine cell kicks off uh, both of the jobs by calling the SageMaker's uh, create. Uh, training job right here. So this, this function kicks off the training. So it's passing the single machine job parameters here and then distributed job parameters here. So like this one is just one instance. This one is two instance and it kicking off in this, those lines of code. When this gets executed, um, basically the training gets executed. And then uh, what will happen, because this is you, uh, starting a, a training using the SDK here. And then once that happens in the console, actually you can uh, come here on a training jobs. It's a little slow in here. And you can see the job uh, right here. I, I already run this, but as you can see, this is the XGBoost classification. This is the distributed uh, classification that's been trained. And then um, when before the training uh, completes, um, its status is saying progress. And once it's completes, it's completed. So it's those trainings are already completed. And then let's go back. And then and then once that uh, the training is complete, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the model artifact uh, gets saved into S3 bucket. And now um, we're going to get into the hosting the model. Um, so there are uh, multiple steps required uh, to host your model, which are to uh, import model into hosting cr by creating model object in SageMaker, and then create an uh, endpoint configuration. And then finally, uh, you can uh, create endpoint. So those uh, next uh, few cells uh, contains that code. So the point, uh, as I said, uh, when a training job completes, the model artifact is saved in the S3 bucket, and then you need to register the model for hosting. And um, this allows you the flexibility of uh, importing models trained elsewhere. So you can uh, cr uh, use the model that's trained uh, not on SageMaker, and you can bring into bring in as model object here. So this is the kind of how how you do it. Let's see the create model. So you can see that's the SDK, um, and then model you can specify model name and then role and then container. So again, this container. So uh, one thing I need to mention uh, the when the training is done. Um, SageMaker takes down the all of the resources that use for um, training. So this is a huge cost saving. Um, and then, you know, like it's charged by minutes. Um, so, you know, you don't have to pay for, let's say, P instances if it's not used. Basically, you never have to pay for idle capacity. And so this, uh, you know, uh, instance, like an instance and a container being specified for the hosting. This is 
separate from different from train uh, training. So this again, you have to kind of choose instance type and then um, host uh, your model on different uh, uh, instance and, con uh, and a container. And endpoint configuration actually uh, is where you specify such information. As you can see, uh, I'm using um, M type this time. And then uh, let's say pro uh, the parts that I need to explain is here that um, as I talked in the uh, presentation, the initial valiant weight, so this is one, so like it um, is 100% of the uh, request comes to this uh, this endpoint. That's kind of what's specified. Um, then initial count to be one, uh, the instance type to be one. Uh, so that means uh, it starts with one instance, but when more request comes, simultaneously, it will automatically scale um, for you. So you don't have to do any of the auto scaling. The SageMaker does it for you. And then um, this one for blue green testing. So like when you are, you want to deploy the uh, new version of the same model, uh, this you can uh, change uh, this variant to let's say 80% is going to go to the old version and 20% um, for the new version. And basically gradually, uh, uh, bringing more in uh, more traffic to that uh, new new version of the model, and then finally uh, you uh, you create endpoint specifying uh, which endpoint configuration you use in, and then uh, let's see create endpoint is where right here creating endpoint and specifying endpoint configuration here. Right. So I'm going to end with one more slide. So um, I'm going to end uh, with a reference architecture to consider. So it's a live site um, that applies a neural style transfer to um, upload photographs. Uh, the model was uh, developed and debugged over uh, several iterations in a SageMaker notebook. And same thing, AWS Code Commit using AWS Code, code Pipeline. Um, the training container was stored in AWS Elastic Container Registry, ECR, and trained against the data set. Uh, when the model was ready for production, uh, SageMaker hosting is used to create the model object and then create a production endpoint. And the calls to the endpoint were made through API Gateway be a Lambda. So they'll, uh, API Gateway and Lambda will encapsulate the endpoint so that it can be called over um, HTTPS. The static website is hosted entirely in a S3 bucket, and the static data is made easily accessible globally through CrowdFront. Oh, I thought I had a Q&A. Here, but I I guess I have a blank, so it, it, I meant to have Q and A here. But uh, yeah, that's great, Rumi. I don't see any questions in the in the chat, so um, I, I I don't. It's always hard to tell. Is that because you covered everything so in depth that people didn't have any questions, or do people just need a little bit more time to think about what you've presented before they come up with their own questions? And you know how it is when you start to get into doing it yourself, um, that's when the questions come forward. So, um, Rumi, do you have a slide with your your um, email on it? If not, I will just pop it in here in the chat, yeah, send to everybody. So, yes. Yes. It's super simple. I love it. Yeah, I email. meant to have this brand. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to have some information here. Uh, no thank worries. You, and Q and A and my information. So. <laughs> no worries. So Rumi's uh, Rumi's uh, email address is just Rumi at Amazon.com. Super simple. So if you have any questions that come up um, while you're working through SageMaker, um, please shoot a note out to Rumi. And Chris has popped his in there as well. It's BurnsCA at Amazon.com. So um, any additional questions? Happy to answer. Um, Chris and Rumi, their job is to work with partners to help develop. 
uh, solutions and integrations with our with our ML services. So I'm always happy to answer those questions. Um, speaking of questions, when we end this survey, um, I'm sorry, when we end the webinar, you're going to get a quick three question survey that pops up and I would love it if you would just take the time to answer those questions for us. Um, we're always looking to improve uh, what we're doing here. We do have one question that popped in. Um, just says, um, it would be good if there are demos with pipeline mode example, um, like from CloudWatch, CloudTrail data directly being ingested in ML. So that's a great suggestion. And then a question, once you have the endpoint ready, how do you send new data for prediction? Oh, so SDK. Um, so like, let's say, uh, in terms of testing, um, right, so I didn't show there how, how to test, but um, you can test the endpoints through uh, SDK on your notebook. Um, and, you know, also you can use Lambda. I, I sometimes use Lambda to test, but um, first thing you want to do is to probably uh, on the notebook call your endpoints through SDK and then test your endpoints in the model. Awesome. And then another question, there are size limitations on the data that can be sent to an endpoint directly? Are there size limitations on the data that can be sent to an endpoint directly? Hmm. I, I can take a stab at that one, Ruby. The, there's not so much a size limitation as there is a response limitation. When you send an inference to your endpoint, you have a time limit of so many seconds to respond with data. So how much data you can fit into that, that, into that single call will limit you rather than the, the size of the payload. If that makes if that makes any sense, and if you find uh, where your 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 payload is too large for one single call, you can do things like inference pipelines where you can send multiple um, a single inference to multiple endpoints. I see your dog agrees with your answer, Chris. That's good. Any other questions, team? I'm not seeing any come in, but I popped Chris's email um, in here, so feel free to reach out with any other questions, and uh, I think we're all set. Uh, we're going to end the call a little early and give everybody some time to catch up on email, so thanks everybody for joining us. Um, you will get an email in a couple of hours with a link to the, the um, replay for this call, so if you want to come back and um, just kind of go through some of the slides and, um, and get some more detail, um, you will all get that whether you uh, registered and attended or, or just registered and, and weren't able to attend today, so everybody gets that. Hopefully some of your colleagues were able to register. Um, thanks all. We're going to have another call. We're actually going to skip the call that we had scheduled in two weeks. I will send an email about that shortly, um, and then we will resume sometime in, um, in mid-July with these calls. So thanks again for joining, and hope everybody has a great day.